one of my favorite sayings, and it's actually from Thomas Jefferson, is that um, the price of freedom is eternal vigilance. And I can't find it any better said in trading. Welcome back everyone to the MCN on with Randy Howell. Randy is my personal training coach. We worked together in the past over mindset. He's a mindset expert, so teaching people how to get to their goals in trading and trade full-time and scale up their trading. And we'll talk, of course, today about mindset, but a few more things. So how's it going today, Randy? It's going really well. It's going, it's, um, you know, something, once you open the door and begin to look out, life is really good. And it's just a matter of you deciding that you're going to organize yourself with a human being that has, that just really enjoys what they're given, life. Yeah, I think it's good to hear for a lot of people, which got out of COVID recently, and it's been going on for like the past two years or so or more now. So good perspective for sure. Absolutely. I, I will be... I will be really happy when COVID is in the rear view mirror. It will, it will be a very nice thing. Awesome. So our past interview on mindset performed really well to my surprise. People seem to really like it and that's been awesome. So I really appreciate that you were here before for giving advice on the mindset part of trading. But let's talk about kind of what happened since we last spoke a few months or years ago. Oh my goodness. Well, my work has deepened in that I, I really have come to understand that the brain was just never developed by by nature to be able to trade and we're actually asking it to do something that it is diametrically designed against and it's been really great in finding out how to get the brain to reorganize to be able to deal to deal with uncertainty and out of that probably the biggest thing is that we've grown a lot um a lot and we're also uh, beginning to realize that there is a demand for uh, the way we teach how the brain organizes into a self and feels far, 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 far beyond trading. So we're actually uh, looking at self-mastery now. We're looking at self-development. And it's just uh, it's something where um, the core was always with trading because, you know, what, what trading taught me was that um, it's inescapable. The trading account refuses to lie. No matter how much we want to lie to ourselves, the trading accounts will tell you the truth about what beliefs that you're bringing in to engage uncertainty with. And uh, for me, it's always been about self-mastery and trading forces self-mastery. You just can't hide from your trading account. You can't do it. But it's uh, it's just gotten it's gotten bigger more, and we're um, with the COVID thing is that I haven't spoken to a group of people probably in three years now, and I actually have come to the moment of where I'm really comfortable not having to travel, and yet being able to speak to groups of people. I've I've seen enough airports, and I've uh, I've had enough hotel rooms, and I like being at this desk where I'm talking right now and being able to talk uh, and and be able to reach and just engage people, lots of people. So that's kind of a, that's what I'm doing. And it's just getting bigger and it's extending. Great. Awesome. So tell me more about uncertainty in trading. A lot of people think they can just like go and learn a strategy or master it and they'll be profitable and pretty much print money forever. But where is that uncertainty coming from? How do you deal with it? And what can you do about it? Uncertainty is the biggest nightmare that you can force your brain to engage. At least for the last six and a half million years as uh, homo, homo sapiens, and for 600 million years, the whole deal is an animal is a self-organizing unit that organizes out chaos, uncertainty. And basically that's what we do, is we want to control everything, we want to control the environment, and it works pretty well. Okay, it gives us the illusion of being in control. And then comes trading, where what you realize the time compression is so short in trading, particularly day trading, that you can't live in denial about you're not being in control. And the big key in trading is that your mind that you bring to trading is diametrically opposed and scared out of the bejeebers of uncertainty. And you constantly are constantly pushing and pushing and pushing. It's almost like we traumatize the brain. And what we don't do is we don't teach it. 
And the whole key is you have to have, you have to be able to train your brain to provide a mind that has a completely different understanding of uncertainty as probability. And you have to change the way you think about winning and losing. Because winning, um, and when you're working with uncertainty and trading, winning is just landing on the right side of probability. It's no reason to get excited. And also losing is not about you. It's about the game because you're, you're working probability and you're going to lose a lot. The key is, is most of us have a brain that is scared of losing because losing meant death. I mean, think about it. 12,000 years ago, there were still there were two cats floating around the earth, and they loved lunching with us. And, of course, we don't like to not be in control. And You get it, and if you lost, you were dead. Somebody's meal. And that emotional reaction is still there. It's just that the thinking brain thinks it's sitting on a throne and controlling things, and it doesn't really realize that it's actually sharing power, who it's sharing power with actually has more control than the guy on the throne. Literally, what you have to learn is you have to take your thinking brain, which is very much required to do all the all that all that numbers crunching in your head, and you also have to be able, be able to align it with the emotional brain to bring the right emotions that engage uncertainty. The um, the brain when it engages uncertainty from a historical perspective, it's going to hit fear and or anger. And before you know it, if you lose, you don't want to take the loss, you want it back, revenge trade, and you don't want to take that loss, you don't want to take my thought. If you win, you think you're a big dude, and you get out of the mind that can actually help the trade. So it's, um, I wish traders understood that they're going to have to work with their mindset and they're going to have to develop it because what you brought with you is not going to hack it. Just before our interview here, I had a call with a trader who tended to have these like really good trades, like these seven R trade, these big wins. And then he was after that trying to get these trades all the time, like chasing the wins, the big wins, and kind of having bad results after a good winning series of trades. So he was trying to find a way to flip things around where it could be kind of following the same process and not screwing up after having a good trade. And I had the same experience before. I didn't, couldn't trade properly. I was looking for these big wins. I would either stop trading or kind of reduce my trading by a lot and miss out on a lot of profits. And that's a big issue. So how can you kind of deal with that? How can you be more consistent and not have any big issues after big wins or big winning trades? Well, the first thing is to be able to notice it. And a lot of people don't see it as anything unusual. The thing though, euphoria, feeling good, is downright dangerous. It produces an emotional state that has you believing that the good times can roll on forever and that you have power. And uh, unless you manage that, you're going to go in and start hunting for new trades and acting in trades in a way that you think you're going to win. And you believe that. I actually worked with a um, Chinese financial firm where I'd made the statement that you can't, you're not allowed to feel good when you trade. And he said to me, but I like feeling good. And I said, well, you can feel good all you want, just not while trading. And literally he and a number of other people got up and walked out of the auditory. Okay. And two days later, um, you know, China had never experienced They, they'd been on bull run for 50 years. They could throw darts and make money. And suddenly there was this market correction. And that guy came to me and says, Randy, I understand now what you're saying is I felt too good. I should have seen this coming, but my euphoria did not allow me to see it. So, yeah, one of the biggest, most powerful things to separate, separate guys who have knowledge of trading and guys who know how to trade is uh, not to get sucked into the seduction of winning. It's all performance. Now, how do you do that? How do you not let your good feelings get in the way of your ability to trade? Well, the same thing as pro athletes, really high-end high -end professional athletes, is that uh, you recognize that what in the past is there, and that's all it is in the past. What's in the future hasn't occurred yet. You have no control over. What you have control over is this very moment. So ultimately what you're doing in trading 
is you're staying in the moment, you're looking at the criteria that you use to judge and to assess, and you stay in that moment, and that's all that really matters. Your job is to perform well, okay? That's the edge, that's the psychological edge, is you're focused on what do I really need to be doing in order to give myself the best chance of winning? And then if you have an edge in your methodology, you give that edge the chance. And your job is not winning, your job is performing. And by performing, you do give yourself the best chance of winning. And over time, you do. And that's training. I mean, you're really going against your very evolution. And what you're having to do is you're having to establish a completely new pattern of dealing. But the thing is, yes, you're staying in the present moment, staying focused on performance rather than outcome. That's what it really boils down to. And I don't find too many people who can do that by themselves. And every once in a while you find uh, a guy who somehow just seems to have the um, genetic luck to have been organized that way. I have a colleague who has made uh, well over $100 million in the last couple of years. And everybody looks at him and wants to be like him. But if you watch him trade, he really doesn't care. He, uh, he's very just focused on performance. He doesn't think about outcome. And the people around him coming to him, going, oh, he's the guru, are trying to say, if I do what he does, I win. That's not the point. He's performing really well and isn't looking at, uh, he's not looking at winning or losing. He's looking at performing. The rest of us that aren't born with um, the genetic lottery, we have to train the brain to produce a mind that is probability-based. And that's really what my training is all about. And it's, it starts with emotional regulation, goes to observation, and you start learning how to find hidden strengths within you to start bringing them into your working awareness. And you practice them the same way a professional athlete does. They practice like Michael Jordan. He shamed people by his work ethic. I mean, he, he, he worked at practice and he didn't want to think during the game except at the last shot of the game. He liked that. Love that. I know you're a big fan of visualization and breathing for trading, to be able to get in the right state of mind and improve your trading. What would you tell someone who doesn't believe in these techniques? They think it's useless or that, you know, breathing is just like this, this simple thing that everyone pretty much does on a daily basis. Well, first of all, if you've done my work, you realize I use a lot of guided meditations. It's the backbone of my work. And unless you can produce a meditative state, and work at that level of change, uh, you do not get to change the basic foundations of the brain. Okay. And you have to also, to be honest with you, you have to, be able to, have to develop kind of a kind, gentle approach to the brain, to the, to the emotional brain. Because you start trying to push it around, force it to do something, it'll just react against you, set the pattern deeper. And one of the pathways in breathing <clears throat> The reason that breathing is so important is that um, breathing is actually part of an emotion. Okay. It's not, you don't breathe and you have emotions. No, your emotion breathes. And when you take a look like anger or fear, you're holding your breath or you're, <laughs> that's what's fueling the emotion. And in emotional regulation, what you're doing is you're learning to breathe diaphragmatically under pressure so that the stress doesn't trigger the fight flight response and you're able to keep you're you're able to keep the arousal level that keeps your mind keen but it doesn't kick into into fight flight the people i work with i'm expecting them to change the way they breathe while they trade and then they find out that learning to calm down also has a tremendous impact in relationships with their spouses with their businesses and they're able to calm down and it allows them to access a much better mind for solving problems long-term. So it, it starts there and the meditation is, I actually teach observation where you're beginning to observe the self and you recognize that you and your thoughts are not the same. And as you learn to step back out of thought and watch thoughts, not as who you are, but as uh, basically emotional programs that have been given voice in your mind. Everything takes on a completely different picture because you discover there's a lot of bad dudes running around the neighborhood of your mind. 
and they provide disinformation quite a bit. Okay. And if you're not alert, if you're not aware, then you're the propaganda just has you believing certain things like I can't win or I'm incompetent or, you know, I'm going to make a lot of money, blah, 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 all this stuff. When it really goes back down to what's my job as a trader is to perform really well. We got to talk about that. So before I used to work with you, there was like a couple of things that would hijack me in trading or hurt my progress and kind of prevent me from getting the results that, that I wanted to get in trading, but I didn't really kind of see them or, or understand them. That's really what I got from working with you and, spending time to learn these. So tell people more about kind of what are these things that can hurt your progress and affect your trading? Yeah. Fundamentally, when you're born, you, you have a brain that immediately turns on and starts shaping itself to be able to survive in the environment. Not only that, you're also getting download from what is known as evolutionary psychology. Like we're born with, um, with programs for uh, fear of uncertainty. It's part of our DNA and we start getting shaped and we start learning about the world. And most of us grow up in maybe well-intended families, but they teach us to be scared of uncertainty and to teach, uh, you know, you even the educational systems we have, you know, you, you're not taught to think or to work under pressure. You're taught to regurgitate facts. And probably one of the biggest things that happens in my business is that people come from okay enough families but what they've done in their families, they learned to have scarcity thinking. They learned that uh, whatever they have can be taken from them. And you translate that to trading and suddenly you really want a lot of confirmations to get in the trade. And when you finally get enough confirmation, the trade's gone. Okay. You'd say that's having problems pulling the trigger. The other big problem is that uh, when you actually get into the green, one of the hardest things in the world is that, oh, my God, I've got it. I need to take my profits now before they're taken away. That's scarcity thinking, and it comes out of our families and our genetics. And that's you have to override that program. And, you know, depending on also is that you come from highly competitive families where you have to win. You're supposed to win and not lose. Um, you may do well in sports. You may well do a lot of things. but when you bring that attitude to trading, trading is, uh, is that um, I can't tell you how many alphas that made lots and lots of money before they got into trading. They come in and try the same and they try to use the same success formula. Last summer, Dolores and I were at a beach and we were just watching. I watch people and I'm watching this little girl and she is curious, 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 curious. She's just, you know, she's in the sand, she's in the water, she's picking up shells, she's doing like that. And father gets pissed off and starts shouting and screaming at her about keeping up. What that father's doing is he's teaching that child not to explore, okay? And not to risk. You know, if you do something that displeases the authority, you get yelled and screamed at. And you just start realizing that's what shaped us. And we have to come to the moment of where we reshape the mind that we basically initially organized for probability rather than survival. And that's the biggest problem in trading right there. Can you tell me more about these things you call the inner critic and the orphan? How does this thing come up in trading and how do you deal with them? If you have ever found yourself beating yourself up, calling that you're a loser, you never done, what made you think you could do this, blah, blah, blah. Well, you're looking at an example of the inner critic, critic criticizing you, judging you, and that is an aspect of your being, but it's not you. And basically, the observer of the self is used to that voice and basically becomes a channel to beat you up. At the same time, what is it beating up? It's beating up in Jungian psychology. That would be called the orphan. That would be uh, another way of saying it, the wounded child, the inner child. And it is that part that has organized itself to be able to survive within a system, the family usually. And often, um, you know, uh, when it takes criticism, it starts shrinking. And in trading, since you're gonna be losing a lot, the opportunity for the inner critic to show up and to criticize and to judge you, or even to tempt you into doing crazy weird things, uh, is always there. 
But the thing is, it's if you haven't been taught to recognize that part and to say, you know, something I need when I, if I lose, I am not a loser. Because that's what that destructive voice within the self would say. If you take a loss, which part of business, you know, it says, okay, you lost, therefore you're a loser. And it keeps, keeps harping on this. And sooner or later, you could easily come to believe that I can't win in trading. When in fact, it's it's really about your confidence, not about your being. The confidence you can do something about, people can find a guy like you who literally has taken it from the beginning. What I like about you, Edwin, is that you are just a you're just a normal guy that has made it through effort to where you are. You know, you you weren't crowned with the genetics that just but no, you're an everyday guy. And that's to me that that's the power. And if you didn't have the attitude that I can do this, okay, then the the inner critic would have won, okay? But that's the way it works. Um, and it's always a dynamic between that destructive part of the cell. And there, Edwin, there was, a, there was a, a social scientist at the end of World War II, uh, Millsap, who could not figure out how perfectly rational Germans could turn into Nazis and have mass fillings and stuff like that. And then when he was watching the Nuremberg trials, he, uh, he was blown away by when, when these people were asked, why did you do it? I mean, really huge, massive killings. They just said, because I was told to. And he just couldn't believe this. Okay. And he set up a series of uh, experiments um, that were very famous in the fifties and sixties. And one of them was where uh, they recruited college kids to become guards in a prison system, okay? They recruited graduate students to become prisoners. And they told the guards that, uh, well, what you're gonna do is you're gonna use classical conditioning methods to teach these defiant prisoners to obey orders. And if they don't do what you ask them to do, you're gonna press this little button and it's gonna give them an electrical shock. And then you're going to increase the voltage until they comply with you. And we're going to train them to comply. And then they, uh, the uh, graduate students turned prisoners were told, the guards think that you're going to be uh, shocking you. They're not. But you're going to pretend you're being shocked. And besides that, they think they're looking through a one-way mirror where they can't be seen. But you're going to be able to see them through the mirror. And you're going to actually be able to see them dialing up the uh, electricity. So at any rate, they started the experiment. And oh, by the way, the uh, prisoners were also told to remain defiant. Okay. What happened was it was supposed to have been a two-week experiment. Okay. They closed it down in three days. Do you know why? Yeah, something about the students becoming way too aggressive and they would just give way too big of a shock. The kids, college kids, <clears throat> knowingly were administering in their mind lethal shocks, watching the prisoners convulse and die. 66% of them killed people in their mind. Now, they didn't really kill anybody, but they didn't know it. There's a lot of problems that occurred out of this, but what, what he realized is this destructiveness lives within all of us and it can be turned on, okay? And I call that the inner critic, that destructive element of our being. And in trading, you are, um, you really have to come to the moment of, instead of avoiding it, you have to master it. Is that uh, nobody likes discomfort. Nobody likes to have to look at this destructive part of our human nature. But if you're going to find success in trading, you're going to have to master it. Okay. It's not true what it's saying, but if you avoid it, you allow that part of your mind, of your history to enter what I call the mind. What I, I, I look at the mind as, as a governing committee and you allow it into the back door and it creates all sorts of chaos and you don't have the ordered mind that you need to deal in probabilities. But that's, that's the inner critic and it's just, you know, I don't put a religious notion on it. I just simply noticed that it's been around forever. 
okay? Whether or not you're talking about the yin yang or whether or not you're talking about Satan and God, it really doesn't matter. It's just different ways of describing this continuum from, it's kind of like really like Star Wars, you know, it's the, the dark side and the light side of the force. And it lives within all of us, and it is us who has to learn to master if we're going to be really good at trading. So how do you turn down that inner critic to be able to bring back the good side in trading and achieve something good in trading? Uh, what I say is training. It's not knowledge. I mean, knowledge is very important, and certainly I teach knowledge, but it's really more training is that the very first thing is you have to be able to cool the circuitry down. That's emotional regulation, all that breathing, muscle relaxation. But then you have to develop the ability to be mindful, to be observing rather than identifying with thought streams. And what I do is I actually teach people once they, as part of the mindfulness training, I get people, I teach them how to locate these particular aspects of their being. And with the inner critic, I get them to start challenging it, not from uh, like I'm a big, strong dude and I'm going to challenge you, but actually recognizing that the only power that that part of you has is the power you give it and you quit giving it power. And then these other things is like, uh, like in trading, you have to develop the discipline of a ruler, the ability to maintain order under pressure. You have to be able to develop the courage of a warrior that's turning toward your fears rather than away from them. You have to develop self-soothing, self-compassion for the self because that's the ticket. That's, it's self-soothing, self-compassion that actually goes in and rewires the self-loaning beliefs on a circuit level so that you, you actually can get into higher function. And you have to develop the impartiality, the clear thinking of a sage under pressure. So it's actually, you know, I'm teaching, I use it from memory. I'm, I'm not saying, I'm not, I'm not a big believer in positive thinking. Uh, I, I know that there are both sides and you need to deal with both. In visualizations, um, I, if you're looking at something and wishing something to be, it's going to fall apart under uh, pressure. However, if you're using visualization to go back into memory and to find instances of these particular emo emotional programs operating under pressure, you've got something. And I, I teach that to pull it there because you recognize that's coming. It's literally coming from real experience. It's not coming from wishful thinking. And you locate those areas and you start pulling them, you start recognizing that it's really where you as a trader, you as a human being are directing that attention as to what shows up. And instead of focusing on the inner critic, you focus on your strengths. And at the same time, it, uh, for those people, including yourself who have worked with me, you realize there's a lot of training. You, you, know, you, do, you, you keep working at this, working at this until it becomes a circuit. And then you keep maintaining it because if you don't maintain it, the old circuitry will come back. What's the difference between people who, let's say, take a program and they go through it and they do some work in, in it, but then they don't see any result after that? The trading stays the same compared to people who have really good results from it. What do they do differently and how do they kind of maintain their success over time? Well, first of all, my, my success rate is about 30%. Um, so even with really good training doesn't mean that you're going to go and do stuff. But I found that it's the people who are willing that have a very strong work ethic and they realize, oh, my God, this guy's giving me the tools that I've never seen before and I need to take advantage of them. And over that, what happens is they just develop a different uh, attitude. They develop, but they realize that what they call themselves is just one particular organization of their potential. And what they learn to do is they learn to develop the tools to take that potential back into the totality of potential and start reorganizing the self, the me, the I, into a different organization of that potential. And in doing that, you develop a mind based for probability. And I think we're probably the only animal that can do that. That's pretty, that's really an amazing, but it really is that you do have the power within you to reorganize how you originally got organized 
I mean, I grew up in a profoundly alcoholic home where things were chaos all the time. And I learned how to live in that chaos. And my programming as a young adult was that if there wasn't, uh, if there wasn't chaos around, I would create chaos because that's what I was comfortable with. Okay. And over time, what I've done is I've trained my mind uh, very differently so that the potential that has now been organized in itself called Randy Howell approaches, um, sees a very different world than it used to see. Okay. And uh, part of its direction, but a lot of it is just uh, maintaining order of mind. It's um, one of my favorite sayings, and it's actually from Thomas Jefferson, is that um, the price of freedom is eternal vigilance. And I can't find it any better said in trading. Trading literally is that uh, it's your internal vigilance about what mind you're putting together to go out and play with the markets. That's the number. That, that's, that's exactly what it is. And so for me, uh, trading produces a, uh, it's actually a uh, course in self-mastery, self-development. And you have to be open to reorganizing the self you became comfortable being and reorganizing it into something new if you're going to have success in trading. And a lot of people just simply aren't willing to do that. Okay. And that's why only about 2% of traders actually make good money. Okay. They're not willing to do, uh, it's not just the hard work, but the willingness. They want things to change out there when what has to change is right here. You know, in my case, um, you know, I certainly wanted to blame everybody else in the world for why all this crazy stuff is happening to me. But I, in fact, was the one creating it. Okay. And I just created a very different world today than the world that I created when I was much younger. And that's because uh, I have a very different understanding of what organizes the mind and what engages the challenges and the uncertainties and the ambiguities of life. I'm comfortable with that now. At the same time, let's say a trader could have like a really good run, they could get many good years of good trading, but then they have like a fall and then they could either go down from there or kind of go back up. What makes the difference between a trader who goes down versus a trader who goes back up and succeeds after a fall? It, a lot of it's interpretation. What is the fall? You know, the thing is, is that you know, I don't have a business to pay been for people taking some serious falls, okay? And uh, it's really, are you going to allow the fall to teach you something? Are you going to be, are you going to have shame of the fall, okay? And I prefer if you're, if you're willing to learn from it, it's telling you, it's telling you, you know, the fundamental thing is your brain just is not organized. It's organized for short-term survival. And it wants control of the environment. That's just the way it is. And you're you're putting it into a situation where it's probability. You're going to take some falls. And it's just really a matter of can you train it to be comfortable in that environment? And a lot of people do need help. And obviously, that's one of the reasons that um, I have a thriving practice and, and group course because people recognize they need the help. And um, it's nobody's fault. I mean, your brain, you inherited a lot of stuff through evolutionary psychology. Your brain got organized long before you were aware that brains got organized in cells. And um, there's nobody to blame. It's just, this is the human condition. At the same time, though, is you have to decide, do I want a mind that can engage successfully probability or do I want to be right? A lot of people really want to be right and not wrong. But if you don't acknowledge that you're not right, then you can't learn to build a mind out of that defeat. So I look at the defeat as, a, as, an, as an avenue of opening to change and reorganization of the self to making a more effective mind for the for the, the work of trading.
Now, how does someone start? Let's say they are somewhat new to trading. They've maybe learned a strategy or so. Do they go straight to coaching right away or can they kind of, they have to learn a strategy first or they have to have some basis before that, before they kind of go to coaching and, and get help from a mindset coach or how do they kind of go about this? I really like for a uh, trader to have apprenticed himself out to someone who actually knows how to trade and is successful doing it so that they, they know that what they're doing is actually working okay, and can work. Uh, as you're probably aware, there's plenty of people who are teaching trading that are not really fine traders themselves. You know, they, they, I won't mention any names, but the thing is that stuff's out there. And the first thing is you're already getting something where somebody's teaching you theory, but they're not, they're not proof in the pudding on the theory. Because it's, it's very common for me to work with a person when they start getting their head together, they realize that they're their whole risk management is just all it's they need to go find a good teacher. They need to find, they need to reorganize their strategies. That's very common. I also like to see a guy or a person. Uh, they usually have to hit the wall pretty hard a couple times before they realize that uh, it's your mind. It's your mindset. Stupid. It, you, and you just have to, people have to get it jarred in and realize that I have a good teacher I have good principles. I just can't hold myself together under pressure. Either good pressure, that's called euphor uh, euphoric, or bad pressure, distress. You know, and uh, and you go. I need to learn to manage the mind until they until they decide they have to learn to manage the mind. I really don't want to work with them. Uh, it, it's it's a waste of their time, and uh, they're not taking advantage of the opportunity sitting in front of them. So. For me, I've noticed that most of them are three to four years. I've had a couple of young fellows, I mean, 24, 25, 26, recognize it early and realize that we need to train the mind. And that probably happens four or five times in 15 years. Though. Okay, it's, it's rare when you see a person with that kind of insight and wisdom that young. But after, they, but after they've taken a few hard knocks, that's... That's only when they'll start listening that mindset's an issue. They, they just think they're going to go in and train themselves to be phenomenal traders. It's just crazy. Interesting. And even someone who goes through a program entirely, it could take them like a few years or some time after at least to be able to really internalize it and kind of really understand the principles. Because you could learn the principles all at once, but before you start to put them into practice and really kind of apply them and understand them, it can take some time. I teach skills. I teach a process. I don't teach wisdom that you plant in your head and then you have the knowledge and everything changes. No, I, I teach a change process. And um, either my group or my individual work is built on teaching that process. You know, a lot of people want to start right, right where the problem's at. And I'm saying that's not where the, pro the problem is way over here and your understanding of emotion. People, people don't comprehend emotions. I mean, we are the embodiment of emotion. We are emotional beings who have the capacity of being rational. We are not rational beings who have some emotions. We are emotional beings. And until you grasp that, emotions just seem something far out there when in fact, they're your very breath. Very interesting. So where can people find you, then connect with you or reach out after the interview? Where can they learn more or start to work with you? I think the very first thing I like for people to do is to go to my YouTube channel. Is that I'm, I've got well over 200 videos there. And it allows them to, uh, I mean, I have people have, that do Randy Howell weekends. I mean, they just, and they have, they when they trade, they're actually watching, they have videos of mine going on. This I, It's not the way I would do it, but. I think it's a very good first step. And then what I would do is I would go to our website um, where it's a really uh, information rich website and you get to read articles, you, you get to see a lot of what we offer. And, uh, and from there, you know, it's something where if you're seriously interested, well, first of all, get free book. Okay. What the heck? Go there again. 
And then if you've got a little bit more interest, get my book, Mindful Trading, and start. I lay out the process there. And from there, uh, it really comes down to uh, a group course. Uh, I know that we have one going on right now, and I know that it'll be starting probably in a couple months, another one. And a lot of people now get in early because they realize that uh, they need to be really prepared when they take the group course because it, it operates at a, a zillion miles an hour. And if you get in at the last second, you're going to be behind. It's, it's that simple. Uh, and it is a, uh, it is a real cost effective way of having access to the tools that I teach. And that's where um, most people end up going in uh, the uh, individual course is for those who really want to work with me, who, who want me as a mentor. And um, those are, we're pretty selective about that now because we just, you know, they, um, they don't manufacture any more time in a day. And so, but the, that's where it really starts is go to YouTube first, Randy Howell, type in Randy Howell and it'll take you there. And then to the website, read the articles, just explore all through there. And uh, then you have to start deciding whether or not um, prove to yourself that you're not going to just grunt through and be successful. Is that um, willpower is really nice. It's nice to have, but don't confuse it with discipline. Okay. A disciplined mind. And if you come to the moment where you realize, I understand that I have to build the mindset that I bring to the management of uncertainty. That's when the courses start making sense. Okay. And I like people who are really dead serious about working with their mindset and my group courses and my individual. I, I, um, I'm just not interested in people who are kicking tires. Not at all. Awesome. And you do put out a lot of good work. So I recommend people to check it out. I'll put some links below the video in the description or the podcast channel. People check it out after if they want and learn more about you there. And thank you, Randy. I appreciate your time. I appreciate your advice as always. I know you're really game, game changing in the trading game and you're able to really help people on a bigger level than a lot of coaches out there. And I really appreciate this. Any last word or advice before we finish off? Yeah. First of all, thank you. And um, you're a good example of the kind of trader I work with. Is uh, when I was working with you, you showed up for business. You know, you, you had the opportunity, and you took advantage of the time, advantage of it. That's the kind of guy that a person I'm looking for. And uh, more than anything, is uh, what I want to stress is that your lack of success—not you personally, your uh, person's lack of success in trading—is uh, it doesn't have to be about them. This is really uh, to become successful in trading. You're going to have to revamp the mind that engages uncertainty. Okay, you know when you're looking at trading and they they dangle all these plums in front of you and you they, you, you know you just do the numbers and you realize money 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 money. They they don't tell you that how few people succeed in trading, and they don't tell you that. Uh, that mindset is everything. You have to have knowledge, but a lot of people have knowledge. Okay. A lot of people have knowledge. You're going to have to have self knowledge and you're going to have to decide to reorganize the self and to hire functioning that can deal in probabilities. That's what you're going to have to do. Really wise words as always. Thank you, Randy. I appreciate your time a lot and I hope we'll catch up pretty soon.